Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about what situations dumbbells do have advantages in, um, and this is going to be mostly for upper body. I'm not saying there aren't lower body uses for dumbbells because uh, you guys have clearly seen me program things like goblet squats, you know, or dumbbell split squats, things like that. Um, so, so we do use those tools for my lifters. And keeping in mind, this is always in the context of getting people as strong as possible because I am a strength coach, meaning we're always going to do max work. We're always going to do this stuff, even if a very high percentage, meaning the majority of our, our lifting itself is geared towards hypertrophy because we know based on the research that hypertrophy raises your strength ceiling, right? It is the single most important factor in determining what your maximum strength is for you as an individual, as far as things you can change, because you can't change genetics or bone structure or leverages. So when we come over to certain things, obviously there are going to be a few things to where barbells are going to win out every single time. And that's going to be max effort work, right? Because we do not want to be doing one to three heavy reps with dumbbells. Um, don't let anybody convince you that this is a wise idea or a good idea because it's not, and it's just not worth it with, with those particular tools. Uh, and then obviously things like dynamic effort work, speed work. You know, barbells are going to be superior due to the bar speeds we're generating. It's just very difficult to, uh, you know, do this effectively <laughs> with dumbbells. It just is, and particularly when we start trying to hook bands and chains and things up, because uh, dynamic effort work is generally more effective with accommodating resistance. Hooking bands and chains to your dumbbells is just not really that feasible. But when we come to a, a lot of movements, you guys will notice a lot of my lifters and myself, uh, we do oftentimes both dumbbells and barbells for similar movement patterns, such as various shoulder work, right? You guys just saw upright rows versus some lateral raises here. Uh, you know, as far as different benching, pressing, and then even rows for the back, right? We, we use these different tools, okay? And barbells still have their place. I don't want people to think that I'm saying that dumbbells are automatically superior to barbells for hypertrophy in these movements, because they're often not. But here is where they shine. Very specifically, again, you'll see uh, Carter there doing some speed benching with bands. Yeah, you're probably not going to do this with dumbbells. So, where do the dumbbells shine? A couple different things. Number one, oftentimes range of motion. So if you'll notice on a lot of these presses, uh, even, even some of the shoulder movements, definitely rows, we can move the weight a little further because dumbbells are independent of the body. The bar isn't limited by our torso on our ranges of motion. Now in many exercises that may not matter that much or matter at all because we may be getting maximum hypertrophy when the bar touches the chest, or we might be at our, our safe distance. And even then, with a lot of those, we have different specialty bars that allow us to change the range of motion. Uh, and I have all those bars, personally. I, I have a lot of specialty bars. I have a dozen of them. A lot of my lifters here have access to them or even own them. So the big one, though, is going to be that range of motion due to the, the independence. In many cases, dumbbells simply have a larger range of motion, okay? And uh, again, we see it displayed in a lot of these. The other thing, you know, you can look at like the upright row versus say dumbbells. Of course, I haven't had many people doing dumbbell upright rows, but those aren't bad. They're not a bad exercise. This can be a problem for guys. You gotta be careful when they slam together down at the bottom, if you know what I mean. But that aside, Dumbbells can have an independent bar path. All right, and so people say, well, why does this matter? Because every exercise that we use works multiple muscles and sometimes multiple or multiple heads of the same muscle. Okay? Even, even a single joint exercise generally works more than one muscle, right? Even all these, these lateral raises and rear delt flies and front raises, they don't work just one head of the delt or only the delts. But even then, when we're dealing with that independent movement, what happens is we fatigue. Notice that the bar path shifts. Now, people will say, oh, well, so does that mean more stabilizers used? No, that's not what we're overly concerned with uh, because our stabilizers are probably not really growing 
significantly. I mean, it's sure it can add to the load, but they're probably not growing significantly as a result of, of being worked, right? Having strong stabilizers makes you better at movements that require stabilizers, much more so than the movements themselves create strength in those stabilizers. You really should be training them directly. Okay, in other words, if you want better hamstrings on your squat for stability, build your hamstrings up. Do some good mornings, you know. You have other options. All right, so what we're looking at is the fact that it moves in an unstable path. Well, what does that mean for the different muscles involved? It means you're going to generate more fatigue overall. Normally when we're dealing with a barbell or something, uh, our bar path tends to get a little fixed. We have compensatory strength where the bar can drift towards our face or towards our feet to compensate for different things like weaker uh, triceps, weaker delts, so on and so forth. We, we have some instability there, which means as we start to fatigue, the bar path may change, which means our weaker muscles that have already reached maximum fatigue we are compensating to use the stronger ones to get one or two more reps, all right? Which means more total hypertrophy. It means our, our weakest links are still getting very good growth stimulus, but they may not be limiting our total work of the set as much. This is amplified with dumbbells because we don't just have proximal and distal, meaning towards the heads and towards the feet. We have lateral instability. Okay, we have entire shifts sometimes in our, our shoulder rotation. All these things, we have a lot more freedom as we start to get fatigue to try to let other muscles come in that aren't as fatigued as much to get one or two, or in some cases, three more reps. So why does that matter? It means that those other muscles are going to get a better growth stimulus. In other words, it may allow for more complete development of the various muscles involved of whatever maybe your strongest muscle is might get a little more stimulus versus on the lift of where the weak link completely stops you from being able to get more sets in. So in other words, your strongest primary movers may in some cases be getting a slightly better growth stimulus because you're not as in as fixed of a bar path and you can use compensatory strength to squeeze out a lot of times another clean rep or two with the strongest muscles in the kinetic chain. Now, is this massively different? Probably not. But if we're chasing maximum hypertrophy, it's not a bad idea. This is also one reason why sometimes we'll do a dumbbell movement after a barbell movement. Okay, now we're really getting somewhere, aren't we? We're really, really taking advantage of this effect. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.